Today's COVID-19 numbers just in. More than 700 people in our state have tested positive for COVID-19. 17 people died. Although more people tested positive today than yesterday, the newly confirmed cases are below the 1,000 mark again today. Joining us live in our studio is Charleston Mayor John Tecklenburg and the Regional Medical Director for the Department of Health and Environmental Control, or DHEC, Dr. Katie Richardson. And it is a pleasure to have both of you in the studio. We know you're both very busy. We appreciate you taking the time to answer some of the questions we have. We should also let viewers know that you both have masks right in front of you and that we believe that we are a safe six feet apart from each other. And so we will try to make sure that we use those masks when needed and make sure that our viewers hear your answers. Um, Dr. Richardson, you know, this week we're taking a look at these numbers for the first time several days of seeing those infection numbers being below 1,000. Great relief. But what do you attribute this decrease in numbers to? But you're still, I'm sure, cautioning people to not let their guards down. Absolutely. So we're very happy to see the numbers falling, um, especially they have been doing so in the low country now for several weeks. Uh, and we attribute that in large part to masks and to people listening to avoiding crowds, um, hand hygiene and the social distancing, as well as staying home when ill. Dr. Richardson talked about the importance of masks. That's the thing that she mentioned first, Mayor Tecklenburg. We know last night, Charleston City Council voted that you will be even more aggressive with enforcing the mask ordinance. Fines of $100 for that initial offense, then $200, then $500. Describe how you will go about enforcing this. Where will these livability officers be in downtown Charleston? Will they go in neighborhoods in the city of Charleston to enforce the mask ordinance? Well, they'll go all over the city, but mostly in business areas where people congregate and uh, walk and travel up and down the street and go to businesses and restaurants. But I just want to emphasize how important it is for folks to wear a mask. The, the real point of the ordinance is compliance mm -hmm. and, and not to be given out tickets, although we will do that. Um, because DHEC has now done a study that clearly shows the difference between uh, jurisdictions that have put mask ordinances in place and those that have not. In fact, uh, maybe Dr. Rich Rich Richardson can pick up on that. Yeah, Dr. Richardson, yeah. please explain more. Absolutely. So we um, did a data analysis last week that looked at where mask ordinance had been put in place and then what the instance rate looked like four weeks after that occurred. And we saw comparing municipalities and counties that had a mask ordinance and those that didn't, there was over a 46% difference. So there was a decrease of 46% in the incidence rate in those municipalities that did put an ordinance in place. And that is very significant. Um, State Representative Wendell Gilliard talked about hazard pay for those people who are on the front lines, first responders, people such as that who are having to work directly with the public, that they should have hazard pay. What are your reactions to that? They are such great risk for being infected. Well, if the state would supply those funds, we'd be happy to do it. But we've seen a $41 million uh, shortfall in revenue because of COVID-19. So our main goal in the city of Charleston is protect our workforce, keep everybody working. We've had no furloughs, no layoffs like some other cities have had. So uh, that's our goal. And if, if we could get some CARES funding uh, through the state or through the federal government, we'd be happy to look at, at compensation like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of people have yeah. already received that. Maybe you ought to talk to them and find out how they went about writing the, the correct way so that they could possibly get those millions of dollars. Uh, they haven't provided any funding directly to uh, jurisdictions under 500,000. Mm -hmm. So only one jurisdiction, Greenville County, qualified in the state of South Carolina. And we're hoping the next CARES Act will include small government. In another conversation we had, Dr. Richardson, you mentioned that the number of cases of COVID-19 within five months was greater, the mortality rate was greater than 10 years of flu deaths in our state. And that was something that stuck with me. I think it kind of stresses how um, important it is that people heed the guidelines for taking care of themselves and just how high the mortality rate is for COVID-19 in this state. 
Absolutely. We, uh, you know, we feel like that that is a message that when there's 17 deaths one day, 43 the next, we're not really being able to see sort of the whole picture and, and, and sort of looking at a statistic like that, I think helps to put in perspective um, what devastation this COVID infection is doing to our communities. Of course, school starting in a couple of weeks, there's still a lot of conversation about how to move forward and how to educate students safely. What is your suggestions and recommendations to the governor about the threshold for schools closing if they have to? Well, I think it's clear looking at other countries that have opened up um, and done so successfully with schools that the most important thing is to get the transmission under control across the community. And so that certainly, I think, needs to be the priority. Um, we're not saying specific metrics, but we certainly believe at this point in time that both our percent positivity rate as well as our instance rate are still in the highest category that DHEC um, does state in our school metrics that we give to schools so that they can make data-based decisions on how best to serve their population. Would you allow your child to go back to school right now? Um, I am allowing one child to go back to school and two others will begin um, temporarily um, remote until those schools feel like it is safe for both the teachers and students to return. All right. So, Carolyn, that's yes, why it's so important for everyone to wear a mask. We want our schools to reopen. We want them to stay open. We want our businesses to stay open. The only way we accomplish that is by keeping these numbers down, and it's now proven by DHEC study that wearing a mask makes a difference. So I ask everyone, when you're in public around other folks, to please wear your mask. All right. Thank you so much, Charleston Mayor John Tecklenburg, Katie Richardson, the Regional Director for the Department of Health and Environmental Control. We wish we had more time to speak with you. And again, thank you for all that you are doing to keep us safe and also to keep us aware. We appreciate your time greatly. Thank you, Carolyn. God bless. Thank you. God bless you as well. And we want you to stay right here with us. We will continue the rest of the day's news and a look at the forecast after a quick break.